Hello everyone and welcome to the next edition of the Chartered Accountants Ireland Chartered Career Chat Series. My name is Sinead Fox Hamilton and I am talking to members about their ACA journeys and careers and today I'm delighted because we have Fergal McCormick of PKF FPM. Fergal, welcome. How are you? Thank you very much Sinead. I'm delighted to be with you. Well, I am so pleased that you're here to join us and to share some of your career inspiration because that's what it is it's an inspiration and what about for the benefit of folk tuning in if we start at the start if you don't mind I would love to know the early years story so Fergal tell me how did you get into the profession? Well I suppose uh, if you hit my school uh, my dream was always I think to have my own business from an early age and uh, I did business studies at O-level, at that stage GCSE now, and then at A-level I did economics. And uh, I then went on to Queen's and I studied a, an economics degree with accountancy minor. And then I did the, the accountancy, at that stage uh, KPMG offered me a, a contract uh, doing the diploma. It was called then now the Masters in Accounting, it was then at Queen's, it's now I think at University of Ulster. And then from that I went direct into, fortunate by the way, to go to a great, a great office in KPMG. And that, fantastic, that was you starting then the professional um, training contract, if you like. Um, would you mind telling me a bit about those years? What, what area of the um, company did you train in? Well, at, at that stage, KPMG Belfast was probably a little bit unusual because it had a staff of maybe no more than uh, 65 to 70. So it was called now a medium-sized office. And I was working in what was called the audit and accounts team, which was also a small business. And uh, I was, look, I, I was very fortunate. I, uh, uh, I was uh, a broad range of client opportunities. And indeed, even up before the end of my first year, I became, they must have thought maybe I was a good accountancy. I actually was headed up as business development. So actually I became the editor uh, of, uh, the first editor, actually joint editor of SKC News. Amazing. Well, I'm not surprised, Fergal, I <laughs> haven't got to know you over the years. <laughs> so, no, look, KPMG were fantastic to me. They, they gave me all the opportunities, tremendous experience uh, across a broad range of industries. And really, I have to say, I think it's a, uh, that, that's why Charter Crown is such an exciting career. It gives you an insight into so many businesses. Well, as a fellow KPMG uh, trainee as well, uh, I can fully concur with that really good experience. So that was you, obviously, in your training days. What happened post-qualification? What did you get up to next? Yeah, probably a bit unusual. Um, uh, I, uh, I went on a secondment to KPMG to the IDB and the Industrial Development Board, which was a pre runner to what's now Invest NI. And uh, again, I didn't realise the time, though subsequently did, for my sins. I always put it down to my weight. But I think I'm still uh, perhaps the youngest ever what they call principal officer in the Northern Ireland Civil Service. Uh, I was a principal officer at 26. And uh, to be fair, that was down to KPMG being realistic. But anyway, I was in as a PO, uh, financial appraisal, uh, corporate financial appraisal executive. And uh, I did that for um, about two years. The secondment was potentially uh, for two years, extended to four, and then to be honest with you, shortly after that first period, they asked me what I become what was called a project director in inward investment. Uh, and again, you know, the, the, the charter country created these opportunities for me. Before I was 30, I was had done business in all five continents. And then um, again, probably being a bit innovative, uh, I uh, I formed my own business and seconded so myself then with the agreement of KPMG the last uh, year or so of my secondment. And uh, then I uh, opened my own business, which continued to have a, a contract of service for a while also with IDB. And does that bring us to the PKF FPM chapter then, Fergal? Back in uh, whatever it was, uh, very shortly, 30 years, by the way, I, I'm trying to beat you in the back of my mind, I think the 19th of August, uh, 1991. And uh, again, unusual, because you've got to remember I was coming from government as opposed to direct mm -hmm. So I, I opened up uh, in 98 Hill Street, top, top floor uh, on my own virtually, uh, above a solicitor, Kieran Rafferty's office. And uh, I opened with no clients. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I had the same routine. Um, I walked to the furthest paper shop at a quarter to nine every morning. And everybody I met on the way back, I told them I was very busy and back away the paper. And then shortly at lunchtime, I did the opposite. I went the other way. And so I started with no clients. And, uh, but thankfully, I had a lot of luck on the way. 
Well, that walk back and forth has certainly paid off. Tell us a bit about PKF FPM now, because you are multi-office, cross-border, award-winning. Well, you're only as good as your team, but no, so we founded the business with a part-time secretary, and then it has evolved from that, mainly indigenous growth, to be honest with you, but we now have five practices, five offices. Uh, none of there's one practice, uh, Belfast, uh, Belbriggan, uh, Dungallon, Newry, and uh, Malusk. And we're part of what's called the PKF International, which is a network of international firms. So uh, we have a, about 125 staff, um, and uh, so it's turnover of around 10 million euro. Wow, what a success story, Fergal. And in addition to that, you are a busy bee in many other endeavours with obviously a past history in our own institute in a voluntary capacity as a past chairman of the Ulster Society and a past president and sporting interests, social interests. How, how do you manage it all? Well, I mean, I enjoy life. I live every day as if it's my last. And, uh, you know, uh, I think it was St. Francis who said that the door to happiness opens outwards. So it's in giving we receive. And certainly I enjoy I enjoy being, I, I get my energy from being with people and uh, people in relationships. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I've been very lucky. I've always been a team player. I believe you surround yourself by good people and you give them an opportunity and they empower you and you empower them. I love your acronym, which I've heard before of team together. Everyone achieves everybody more. Everybody achieves more. Yeah. yeah I yeah. love that. And there's another motto you have as well in that. I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. Very good, very, very, very good change. Yeah, that's right. That was my ethos when I started the practice. I haven't changed it. Yeah. Sure. Actually, believe it or not, the first speech I ever gave was to the uh, the Irish student accountancy body and Steve Donner. And I was a so-called keynote speaker. And uh, I could pick my own theme. And the theme I picked was, I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. And I must have got three or four phone calls that week. This is a accountancy for you. I said, yeah, that's the theme. And I'm more convinced now than ever, actually, that's the key to business and, and indeed life. I resonate with that. So, no, I always remember those words. In terms of the journey, Fergal, and thinking about the, I suppose, the ACA qualification, would you say it's definitely had an impact on your ability to be able to pivot and to, you know, have the success that you've had? I oh, know, without doubt, it's been the, the key thing. I mean, the, 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 the fantastic... Uh, attribute of a chartered accountant, and particularly an Irish chartered accountant, is the flexibility it gives you. I mean, the, the breadth of knowledge, the, the breadth of, I mean, I can't think of any other uh, profession where once you qualify, you have more flexibility than whenever you start. So, you know, you think how often we narrow ourselves down when we go into the university course or whatever, and you qualify as a chartered accountant, look around you. Whether it be an industry, practice, public sector, not for profit, you name it, there's chartered accountants everywhere. And uh, that's good because that shows the breadth of the qualification. And I think that also shows the breadth of today's world that, uh, you know, life's a, it's a learning journey. Life's experiences are learning journeys. And uh, I certainly see it as a foundation upon which to build upon. Yeah, we view it as a business leadership credential, or I would certainly talk about it as a business leadership passport. Would you agree with that? Oh, without doubt. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, literally, it's a... It's, 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 it's the business leaders of tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I've never been a bean counter. So many things I should be, I already know what my calculator is. Sometimes I maybe go a month without even using it. But I mean, certainly it's all about people relationships. It's, uh, it's making a difference. It's impacting people, it's impacting businesses. And uh, I can't think of any qualification that uh, after you qualify and even 10 years after you qualify, the breadth of opportunities you have. Do you think there are certain skills, Virgo, that are important coming into this profession that, you know, you need to have? Yeah, I would like to twist that slightly, to be honest with you, uh, Jane, because I, I think skills are important, but actually more important are values. So I, I think that, um, and I, I come back to the question, but I think values are even more important. I think you must have integrity. Uh, I think it's a people-focused business. If you want to sit in the back room, try to count your my view is not for you. Uh, it's all about um, emotional intelligence and it gives you an opportunity to develop your emotional intelligence and to move forward, uh, which I think no other career does. I mean, like, it's amazing to think, you know, as a young student, you know, as a young chartered accountant, because of that IDB role, I was speaking with the owners, the AMDs of world organizations, because I, you know, what other profession would I have been doing that at that age? Uh, so then getting back to the skills. So I have to get that in because I'm a wee bit reluctant all the time people say skills. I believe values drive everything, ethics, uh, people focused, 
far more important than skills. You can learn skills. But that values are your DNA. You have to make sure they don't change. Work on those. And uh, I think in terms of skills, three core skills, I suppose. Communication is one. Analytical and IT skills uh, in, in its broadest sense. And I do believe, believe it or not, uh, broad economics and business awareness. Yes, no, all fair comment if there. If I was advising anybody, uh, I'm not sure. I, I think passing exams is not everything. And actually, I actually believe the broader you come to the exams, which it may make the exams themselves more difficult, I think from a career point of view, it enhances your long-term career prospects. Another thing I remember from a past presentation of yours, um, Fergal, is you saying that whenever you've reviewed CVs, if you have been hiring in the past, you would skip to interests and other activities perhaps first when mm -hmm. reviewing a candidate. Is, you know, is that important? If you were hiring, mm -hmm. you want to see the full person? Yeah, you're listening too, too much to me there now. But yeah, <laughs> yeah I, uh, I go straight to the extracurricular activities because, again, you know, you can't turn the clock off at five o'clock. I'm looking for a caring person. I'm looking for a team player. I'm looking for a leader. I'm not looking for a soul player. I, 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 I. You know, I, 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 I isn't to put politely, excuse the language, isn't really worth a damn to me. I'm looking for somebody who's more than willing to integrate with other people, who wants to help people. And, you know, I'm looking for the captain. I'm looking for the volunteer and whether it be the St. Martins or the St. Vincent de Paul. I don't mind whether it's music or chess or the church or whatever, but I am looking for somebody who is out helping other people because I don't think you can help within an office. You're not helping outside work. So in our practice, for example, every member of staff has to complete a thing called every year, an organizational analysis, which you list outside work. And I can assure you, if you had a blank sheet, you wouldn't have a job. Oh, wow, I didn't know that now. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, you're, you're wanting to employ people with a, a full rounded personality and who care outside of the day job and are contributing to society, I suppose. Yeah, I think caring is the key to life. One thing you touched on earlier, Fergal, if I maybe go back to it, um, travel, that's a common question I get. Can you travel with a qualification? Um, you've obviously had the opportunity to travel with it. Um, have you seen how easy it is to do that with the Irish qualification? Well, I, I think the, an Irish chartered account is respected throughout the world as a global passport. Uh, I myself, uh, I think, uh, no doubt there, the three years I spent at IDB, four, but three particularly internationally, uh, open up my, you know, as I say, you know, it's hard to believe before I was age 30, I was in Korea three or four times, Japan twice, I think, America, maybe five or six times, Germany, you name it. Um, and uh, that certainly opened up my mind. Now, if I'm being honest with you, I'm not sure that I necessarily had to go anywhere for a year or two. And uh, again, I would be quite shrewd. I think you can work that into your person. I'm a homebird, mm -hmm. but I had to make sure I observed global business. And again, I, I mean, I, I know people uh, recently I observed who actually did Harvard from Ireland. But, you know, again, they opened up their, their mindset through smart adjustment. Other people went overseas. Yeah. No, it's so important. And as you say, even with technology now, the ability just to connect in globally, um, you can do it from the comfort of your, your own home. <laughs> it's all about paper connections and uh, global, yeah. most of a global mindset today. Very true, very true. Another bit of wisdom I'll take away. Virgil, if we think about somebody who is early doors in their career, you know, either looking into the profession and considering it, or indeed, you know, already just starting out in their journey, have you any tips or insights you would share with them? Well, I might get a bit controversial here, Shana, because people can take the head off me here. Right? <laughs> Go for it. The university is looking for my head, but... Um, uh, you know, my, my own view is that the flexibility is important. I think the university route or indeed the, the direct route through the accounting technicians is equally important. Uh, however, I do have some firm views with university. I think, um, I think internships during the summer are very, very important. Yeah. So, you know, if I, if I literally, if I want to own an ice cream shop, I'll go and sell ice cream. But, you know, and I'll go to America and I'll get crack and that's lovely. Uh, and that will develop your people skills, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I, I always, at a young age, was always thinking, not to be honest with you next week, but three to five years time. And uh, I'm a strong believer that you can achieve a lot through summer internships. And therefore, I am not as strong as Albert, uh, advocate as some universities appear to be for a full internship year. Uh, I think it's very important to have internship. 
Um, I think it's the best way to find out, number one, whether you like the work. But secondly, I think it's the best way to put yourself in front of a potential employer. So I actually believe three summer internships can add up to one year in intern, but one full year. So personally, if it was my advice, uh, nine times out of 10, I wouldn't go for a full year in internship uh, unless I was doing a totally non-discipline subject matter. But I would go for three summer internships. Really interesting, but wise words. And as you say, you know, it's the opportunity to get yourself in front of an employer and really get a taste of it all. Not an internship, to be honest with you. Could well be overseas. It could well be that you go to a particular employer. And you remember, you know, people might not realize this, but a, a, a really brilliant personality, a really brilliant person, they are they don't even have to think it. Every employer want them. You know, they offer ten jobs, not one. So all of a sudden they got distinguished. Well, if this person wants me, what am I going to do different? So why don't I go and sit on? I want to do an internship for you this year, on the condition that if you're happy, you'll arrange to place me in such such an office all around the world. In year two for the summer. Yeah. I think that's far better than football for the summer. And I haven't bought in that whole idea that, you know, uh, that, that your internship or what you do during the summer shouldn't be related to your future career. You know, it can be totally varied because, particularly with charter pregnancy, it's all about people. So you don't have to be in vigors, but you need to be in something that is dealing with people. Yeah. And you flag rightly there as well, Virgil, the apprenticeship route, you know, direct from school, there's entry into the profession. And I know even in your own firm, you've maybe had even apprentices join as well. If we're being very honest, uh, I'm being honest with you, it might surprise you. We've had, I think, three people placed in the final exams of the institute exams. And I think uh, certainly two of them, have, two, well, three of them actually, uh, the, two I think in the finals, uh, they both came uh, not through the traditional route. They both actually, they would have been more than capable of going to university, by the way, but they chose not to go to university. And uh, they, it's an interesting case. So equally, I mean, I think some of our most success stories, I can think of a lady, and she'll not mind me saying this, who came in one day looking for two hours work experience uh, because uh, she was a dinner lady and uh, she wanted to go back to do her O-levels at 31 years of age. And uh, she did that, and uh, she became uh, she became one. Of, she's not with us any longer because she made a, a life choice not to do her apprenticeship. But I can tell you, she's an amazing story. She became UK accountancy apprentice a year, second of the year, etc. She became a director in our organisation, and she worked herself up from uh, being a dinner lady. Uh, she had two young kids working around, then working in a, a fast food takeaway on a Sunday night, so because she'd be at home for the kids next week. And eventually, as the kids went through school. She worked more and more with us. And uh, she was perhaps, if I'm giving you an example of perhaps our best ever employee, that's it. So she was a mature, she came into us at 31 and uh, she did her accounting technician. I think she came maybe to be first, did very well in those exams, accounting technician's exams, and then went on to become your tax exam. But uh, I love that. You know, there, there has to be, look, if, if people's got the right DNA and they want to make it happen, there's no better place than a chartered accountancy career to make it happen. Well, Fergal, we have myth busted today because there is a misconception you need to be an accountancy graduate and that it's very one dimensional and it's just about bean counting and number crunching. Not the case. No, that, that is important. And by the way, that brings you one particular way. But remember when you're four years past qualification, mm -hmm. you're accountants all the time. You're dealing with uh, designers, you're maybe dealing with TV people, you're maybe dealing yeah. with charities, or you're dealing with the real world. And if you have built up real world experiences on your way, mm -hmm. it may well take a while. And there's no doubt that the exams become very difficult because yeah. someone may be doing a relevant subject since they were 15 and you're not. But by God, if you pass the exams, ha ha, look at all the experiences you bring into the room. Look whenever you go look for the job and you this, that, and the other. Look whenever you're doing the interview. Imagine somebody interviewing 20 people and they're all stereotypes. Oh, just watch the person that comes in and says differently. Well, I'm this and I'm the other. You remember that person very quick. That person, I can tell you, if they're good, they'll never leave the room without being offered a job. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Fergal, we have covered some ground today. Have you any closing remarks for anybody that's perhaps tuning in today? We have a mix of viewers from those considering the profession to those that are very early stages and just maybe qualifying. Well, I think number one, there's no, I personally remember being biased, there's no more exciting career than an Irish charter accountant, number one. 
And why it's so exciting is you can come at it from many different ways. And ultimately, when you qualify, your breadth of experience as you go through your career journey can equally bring you to many different places. But you'll never forget the passport of the Irish Charter Academy. It's also very attractive because I think it, so long as you have the, the guts, the resilience, the persistence to get there, the hustle. You know what they say, the hustle. Yeah, I, I love it. You know, whatever they say, the door is locked. No, it's not locked. Let's go another way. And if you have that determination, uh, yes, charter currency is the mechanism, and an Irish charter currency to go to the very top. But there are many ways to get there. And actually, uh, don't be put off because you test the different forms of life experience, first of all. Uh, there's, a, there's a home for you in charter currency if you want to be there. And more importantly, you can contribute greatly to society in its many forms. Virgo, what a note to end on. Thank you so much. I always enjoy listening to you and I'm delighted that you came on and shared your experiences for our audience today. So thank you so, so much. And thank you, Shane. And I must say, I greatly appreciate the Institute, the support has been to me and indeed the many friends for life that I've made through my contacts in the Institute and through the accountancy and business professions. I've never held myself out purely as an accountant, by the way. Uh, and I've certainly enjoyed working more, if I'm being honest, in multidisciplinary environments, including multidisciplinary boards. But that's the fun of life. And as you say there, you do, you make great friends and great connections. That's another, you know, personally, in my view, you know, it was a surprise for me that within the profession, but a really welcome one, just the, the people. Onwards and upwards, the future, the future will be bright, you did. Here, here. We need everyone to make it bright, but they will. <laughs> Virgil, the crack has been good as well. And everyone tuning in, I have no doubt you enjoyed that session today. So until next time, thanks a million folks and see you soon. Thanks, Virgil. Thank you very much, Shane.